Hey everybody, it's Jenna Allen with Mental Health Today, and today I want to talk about, um, I had a request for dating somebody with mental illnesses and how to kind of deal with that and just some tips on what to do. It's kind of a difficult topic to talk about just because I don't know how people are going to react. I don't, I don't want you know, people that take this as an insult or as, I don't want people to feel ashamed from this video because it's, it's hard to deal with certain mental illnesses, if that makes sense. Like, so it's also a difficult topic because a lot of people are different. Everybody has a different view. Everybody has a different perspective. Everybody, you know, Everyone has different patience and levels of what they can handle in a relationship. So for me, I can handle people with anxiety because I have anxiety. So I've learned how to like calm people down when they have anxiety. I, for me, like I found sometimes giving them space really helps or sometimes giving them a hug and just being there for them really helps and I have a lot of patience I mean this is the career I want to go into so you have to have a lot of patience to work as a therapist um but it really depends I feel like I feel like everybody everybody has certain patience and certain things they can handle and certain things they can't handle right so I've also dated people with bipolar disorder and or and borderline personality disorder it is very very challenging um it it doesn't mean you know they're a bad person or anything you know having mental illnesses doesn't mean you're a bad person it just means you need to learn how to you learn differently right like your brain everyone's brain is different right like you learn in different ways um it, it's you know, we're all different, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, you know, for me, because I've never had borderline personality and because I've never had bipolar, I don't understand it. Doesn't mean I think the person's bad. It's just, I can't understand it. So I, I can't be in a relationship with somebody that struggles with that kind of thing. I can be in a relationship with people with that have ADHD or anxiety because I know how to deal with it, right? But and I can and I can relate and I feel like when you understand what they're going through it also makes it easier to have a relationship with them and deal with that kind of thing like I can handle people with anxiety because I've suffered from anxiety and and it usually comes from a fear of something so I I can relate and I I can understand it right Whereas other things I can't understand. So it makes it harder to be in a relationship with somebody that you don't understand, right? And I think if you're somebody that um, is in a relationship already and you're not, you don't know how to handle, like, I don't know what the illness is, but you just, it's just not working. It's, it's too much for you. And like, sometimes it can actually be mentally draining and it's, you know, not in, intentional but sometimes you have to look out for yourself and realize that you don't have to save everybody you don't have to deal with everybody's um illnesses right like doesn't mean they're a bad person like everyone deserves to be loved everybody deserves to feel like an equal but if you can't um if you can't handle certain illnesses you shouldn't be in a relationship with that person just because it's not fair for you and it's not fair for them right so it depends what it is but if you love the person and you want to make it work, see a therapist together, do some research on the illness, right? Like try to try to learn to understand it a little bit better so you guys can work together as a team and make it work, right? It's very possible. I mean, there's been stories on, you know, like marriages where the woman has had suffered from bipolar and the man was patient right like it is possible to have a healthy relationship when with people that have mental illnesses it's just you have to understand it you have to be willing to have a lot of patience and you both have to be on the same page I think that's like the key right you don't want a one-sided relationship but 
um, I would do research. And if you are single and you're, st- I would learn about yourself first. It's kind of what I'm doing right now. Like, um, like I have, I suffer from codependency issues, right? And I want to sort that out before I get into a relationship again. So I'm staying single for probably a year and a half to two years. And I'm also going to school, so I won't have time, right? So I think it's really good to make a list of learning about yourself. I think it's super important because then you can kind of learn what you, how you're going to be in your relationship, right? Like do some research on some stuff because nobody's going to be perfect. You know, everybody struggles, everybody has their issues and you have to learn on if you can handle that or not. Right. So I think just learning about yourself will really help you learn about what you can handle and what you can't handle with being in a relationship with someone that suffers from mental illness and you know we're all human we all suffer from something I mean I'm not perfect like I suffer from codependency issues and that's something I'm working through like I'm gonna be seeing a therapist soon and that's because I want to actually better myself and I'm not afraid to share my story I'm not afraid and you know everything that I say on my channel is based from experience and I have even recently done some research and I am working towards a better me so I can be a an amazing therapist in the future so I can make up the world a better place in my own way right so I think it's one of those things where you just you really really need to learn about yourself if you're single before you can learn about other people and before you can learn like I mean in a way dating can be great because you you learn you learn things right I mean I don't think I've as much as I've had my heart broken I don't think I regret any of my relationships because I mean my last relationship was the reason I wanted to be a therapist so I mean like that should tell you something like I mean it wasn't the healthiest but you know like he definitely taught me a lot and made me realize that this is what I want to do for a living. I want to help people that suffer from mental illness and insecurities and, and all these negative things because everyone deserves to have a chance at life. Everyone deserves to be happy in life and happy with themselves, right? So if you're single, whether you're a man or a woman, this is for everybody. Learn, Write a list of things that you can handle. Do some research study all these mental illnesses and if you are in a relationship do a research on your partner's mental illness go to therapy if it or if it's if it's not healthy to the point where you can't understand you don't know how to deal with it reconsider whether this relationship is worth holding on to right um what's the best advice i got for you guys today on this um it is a tough topic, like I said, because, like I said, everybody has a different perspective. Everybody, like this, everybody has a different view. Everybody has different patience. Um, and anyone out there who is suffering, you know, you're not a everybody. Nobody's alone. And don't feel ashamed. Don't sell yourself short. Don't don't be so hard on yourself. Just help yourself and love yourself at the end of the day, right? And it, it's okay to suffer as long as we reach out and as long as you do the work to become a healthier, happier you. Because at the end of the day, we all want to be happy, right? That's the goal. So if you guys have any questions, any comments, please just comment below. Let me know if you have any requests on anything else. Just let me know. And uh, I will keep doing videos every week. And I will see you guys next time on Mental Health Today. Bye.